Hey, this is Sam from Sure. In this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about a feature called Select from Frequency List, which enables you to coordinate extra or backup frequencies and deploy them to channels in a runtime environment. This is going to be a multi-part tutorial, and in this first part, I'm going to cover the basic mechanics of setting up a coordination with backup frequencies and uh, go through one scenario in which you can pick from backup frequencies and send them to online devices. So in my inventory here, I just want to set you up with the devices and the context that I'm working in. I've got some Axion and some ULXT channels online, as well as a Spectrum Manager. If you've never used a Spectrum Manager before, I'm going to cover briefly uh, why that device is cool, but more on that in a second. In the Frequency Coordination tab, I've taken a quick scan, and I've brought all my frequencies into the Coordination Workspace. And beyond that, I've actually added backup frequencies for both my Axiant and my ULXD systems, uh, four a piece for each, and I've already coordinated compatible frequencies. Um, you know, I'll do it again just for fun. Ah, oh, there we go, so satisfying. So, uh, in this scenario, I basically, I've got my primary frequencies that correspond to real channels and extra backup frequencies that may come into play if one of my frequencies goes south, either before or in the middle of a show. Now, uh, the next phase of this process we would normally go through would be to assign and deploy these frequencies. This is where I can take my channels and make sure I uh, assign them to frequencies that look good for them, maybe they're far enough away from one another, any uh, choices that I want to apply here. And uh, one thing I want to call out is all these extra frequencies that don't have channels assigned, these are going to be backup frequencies. Um, and when we deploy all of these frequencies to, in this case, my Spectrum Manager, or I could just as easily deploy to Workbench, um, the whole package, all the frequencies, are going to become what we call the CFL, or the Compatible Frequency List. Now, there's a real benefit of deploying a CFL to a Spectrum Manager versus just Wireless Workbench, and that will become evident in just a second here. But let me go ahead and deploy these frequencies. So by deploying these frequencies, I'm going to both set these frequencies to these online channels, and then also send the whole shoot and match, the whole CFL, to the Spectrum Manager. Now, there's a, there's a reason when I describe the CFL, I kind of cut it in two pieces. The frequencies that belong to active channels and the frequencies that uh, are unoccupied at the moment by any channels. And that's because that's how the CFL is constructed. Um, I can always view any CFLs or any frequency list by selecting this frequency list button from the toolbar. And you'll notice that my channels are organized into two bins. We've got in-use frequencies at the top and we've got uh, backup frequencies at the bottom. And in-use frequencies, as I mentioned, correspond to online channels, and backup frequencies are extra. So this is a nice overview of all of the frequencies that are a part of the CFL. And why I'm hitting this point home so much is um, these backup frequencies, you'll notice there's some kind of some action happening uh, down here. There's some stuff going on. Because I deployed these to the Spectrum Manager, it's actually listening in to each and every one of these frequencies. You can see there's a DBM readout basically telling me the noise level at each of those frequencies. And this rank is an algorithm that's basically letting us know in a pinch, if we need to use one of these frequencies, what are the quality of each of them to guide us to pick the best possible frequency for any one of our systems. So that's cool. This is a nice monitoring interface. But let's, uh, let's jump into an actual scenario of how we would use this stuff. So, you know, let's say we're in the middle of the show time and, uh, you know, we just did a line check for, in this case, Margaret's channel. And a couple minutes before the show, the technical director, you know, hits me up on the intercom and says, hey, uh, whatever frequency Margaret's at, something's going wrong with it. Let's change it out. Uh, well, this is perfect. I know I calculated backup frequencies. I want to use one of those backups and send it straight to this device. The easiest way to do this is to use the select from frequency list capability. Um, and a really convenient way to access it is simply to right click on the channel strip and choose select from frequency list. Now when I do that, you'll notice this dialog pops up and some things look similar from our frequency list overview, but there's some special filtering that's going on here. Basically this dialog is telling us for this particular channel, which we selected, here are all of the backup frequencies that are suitable candidates that you can send to this uh, particular channel. Now it's only showing us the, the frequencies that are appropriate for ULXD uh, in the G50 band in this case. And it's also ranking them for us. So that, you know, if one of these frequencies is yellow, meaning there might be some higher noise floor, or uh, there was some other detected uh, activity on that frequency, I don't have to pick it. I can pick a green one instead. And with, uh, with ease, I can just pick the frequency I want. So instead of 479, I'm going to choose this 490 frequency. And all I have to do is select it and choose switch to selected frequency. And that new 
compatible backup frequency that was pre-coordinated and monitored for, uh, by the spectrum manager instantly gets sent to the channel. Now, if we zoom out a bit, you know, I want to talk about the mechanics of this. Margaret, in this case, this channel happens to be a ULXD device. Uh, and for many systems that don't have uh, what Sure calls Showlink technology or the ability to remotely manage and control transmitters, changing the frequency of the receiver would also require, uh, after the fact, a change of frequency of the transmitter. So you could do this in a couple ways. You could resync Margaret's transmitter, or you could have a, a spare transmitter set to the new frequency and then trade transmitters with Margaret in this case. Uh, but in either event, what we've just done is, in the face of interference or some RF issue, we can pick a frequency from a pool of qualified backups, in this case, monitored by our spectrum manager, and instantly deploy it to the device. This is a really great feature if you want to be able to respond nimbly to you know, uh, all, any sort of RF issues that we know are uh, happening out there. So I, I want to stop the tutorial video here because there's some more advanced concepts I'll, uh, I'll cover in future videos. But uh, if you've got any questions or comments or you, you want to see different sides of this uh, backup frequency deployment and management capability, definitely let us know in the comments down below. Thanks.